Meghan Markle here. Today is June 27, 2024. It is 4 a.m. I'm really studying late. It's not like I was on the computer making any list. I had my list prepared, but I was knocked out on the couch. But I need to record a lot, a lot, because there's a lot going on. So for App Your Team Sussex, I might have two videos. These three tweets, um, one of them from Byline, has an article I want to read it I've already shared that article with you on my community board and there's the link here and then I have some other tweets regarding um, different things that popped up on my timeline and I wanted to share with you these two tweets from Meredith um, I believe they are TikTok videos I want I want to listen to them it has to do with the way the tabloid uh, UK tabloid is in the US and there's some stuff regarding PYTE I want to share with you. And then our part of Pew Service, there's some tweets. Let me see how many. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six tweets for our Pew Team Sussex. So let's get going. Okay, let me grab the first tweet. I should actually leave these last, but the articles are very important because it really gives you the foundation, the inner, the really issues that's really going on. And the rest are just discussion okay but uh, the articles are very important at least the articles that i share this is the background um 4297 subscribers new subscribers welcome i believe the last time i recorded was 4295 so new subscribers welcome analytics okay 1563 views in the last 48 hours while i'm reading while i'm just thinking on top of my head there's a tweet that i share on my community board that uh, i uh, saw yesterday and it has to do with uh, how i'm seeing those comments here but they're not showing up maybe these are people that i blocked let's see if it shows up this is the tweet yeah they're not showing up um this one the british reporters of ruin newsweek the daily beast and all of that is like more of how the oh i have it it's there it's on the list it's second on my after i read the article so it's there i'm gonna be going over it um this is it here i put the first few sentences that um it's like all of a sudden the people pretty much I was thinking about the tweet I didn't think I put it on the list so when I went on my community board to check it and I realized that I have it on my list already so that's what I was thinking and then I lost track of what I was gonna say so that's pretty much that being the light okay so this is on the list as well but let's focus in the order that I have it okay so this is that one that's from byline times a revealing argument from the Times of London. Don't worry about journalistic ethics. What matters is the money. This is the thing that these old people are trying to implement in around the world. They don't care about ethic. They don't care about people's lives. They just want to just do as they please. You've seen how they have disrupt many young people's lives like Caroline Flack and uh, Princess Diana you name it they don't care about anybody so this cannot go on okay money is not everything money is not food it's not water it's not air it is a tool for transaction for good and services that's it but these people are making it food, it's not water, it's not air. This is why they're harnessing properties, land, to leave people with nothing so people could be in 
uh, in need or begging for for things. And perfect example, just look in the continent of Africa, what, how they have turned that continent into. But thank God many of them are pushing to or trying to, you know, get out of the misery that these people put them in. Money is not everything. You have to respect people's, their space. All right, so let's get back to the original recording. Columnist Gerard Baker glass over Murdoch Press criminality and the accusation against his own editor. Why? Brian K. Koth ask. Okay? So there's me here. I'm surprised I'm the only one who responded. So people's lives don't matter. They're harassing, tormenting, and terrorizing people to write BS stories. They are using people for their own enjoyment, wealth, and don't forget, entertainment. Baggage for God. Okay? So let's go into that. I want to read this article. Okay? So that's by Brian K. Koth, 20... 5 June 2024 okay so let's see here how long is it okay so it's pretty decent but let's go over it because uh, the last time I recorded it took me a long time to finish edit it I didn't record anything yesterday because I really wanted to finish edit whatever I had on Saturday we're leaving for a week <laughs> uh, right so I need to leave some stuff for you guys to watch while I'm gone Okay, so let's get going. Um, the Time of London recently carried a comment article by Gerard Baker about events at the Washington Post, where the new publisher headlined, If Sanctimonious Staff Have a Veto, The Game's Up for Washington Post. It opened a window into the festering soul of Murdoch journalism. Baker's high octane contempt for the Post, with its, quote, left wing, woke progressive ideology, and its Preening sanctimony is matched only by his apparent determination to distract the readers of the Times from the realities of a dispute that is deeply shaming for the Murdoch organization. Lewis plans to introduce big changes at the loss making American title, but his past in UK journalism has been catching up with him. With the New York Times and the Post on staff raising questions about what he did as a senior Murdoch executive during the phone hacking scandal. Okay, there's a link to it. I don't want to go. I have enough to share uh, tonight. He is accused notably of participating in the attempt cover up of hacking and bribery and of helping or permitting the destruction of evidence. Other evidence link him with a plot by the Murdoch company to discredit political opponents of its ambiguous television projects. He denied wrongdoing just as he denied further accusation that he tried to quash reporting on the allegation. Okay, so many of these I've read and we sort of have an idea. If you've been following some of the uh, videos or at least read some of the links that I put on my community board or even on the videos, you should be up to date of what he's making reference to. Because some um, articles go deeper in details of different topic with the murder thing. Lewis appointed a new executive editor for the Post, Robert Wendnett, who is currently deputy editor of the Telegraph in the UK. But after claim that Wendnett had published articles based on phone hacking, he withdrew from the role. Wendnett also denied wrongdoing. Gerard Baker, whose chief take on all this, overtly at least, is that it is both pious and suicidal for journalists to concern themselves with such matters when the newspaper is losing $77 million a year. If you can't sell your product, that's the quote, he writes, you are doomed. This is not what the article is really about, but let's engage with it for a moment. Though Baker may not like it, what may be true of shoes and chocolate bars is not necessarily true for journalism, and he needs to look no further for proof than the record of the time itself, which though it happens to have turned a profit in recent years, lost money every year for the best part of century before that, including 30 years under Murdoch ownership. Yeah, if you look at, for instance, the amount of payoff and nonsense that they keep putting, and then the people they write about are suing them. Something similar is true for The Guardian. Murdoch's The Sun also loses a lot of money. 
It is true that money usually matters, although it will take a century for the post losses to make a noticeable hole in the $200 billion fortune of its own Jeff Bezos. But here is a second point. If you go to market, you have to have a product to sell and the post product is ethical journalism. The proposition that Baker is making without of course expressing it is that the post should dish its ethic to make money. Yep. Mm -hmm. which of course is pure murder. But in reality, this money argument is just a distraction. It is where Baker wants you to look. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that, which I've said in other videos, is that the damage that they're trying to do is already done, which is what my next tweet will be talking about. What is most revealing about Baker's case is that he fails entirely to consider the accusation against Lewis and the entire business of UK press criminality. While he tells the post staff to forget about all of this, in other words, he makes no attempt to show that it can reasonably be forgotten. <laughs> He's trying to do one thing. This is the squirrel that they're throwing. Go look over there. And people are saying, no, I'm looking. Actually, he just opened a new can of worm for saying what he just said. And people are focusing on what he's saying, not what he's telling them to go look. Okay. The reason is simple. With the relevant detail attached, his argument becomes obviously and grotesquely self-serving. In fact, this is not about the post at all, but about the Murdoch Empire and to a degree about the Times of London itself. What Baker really seems to be telling his readers as a Murdoch employee writing in a Murdoch publication is that the crimes and wrongdoings of the Murdoch press in the UK do not matter and are to be forgotten. Murdoch, he is implying, should be allowed to get on unhindered with the business of making money from doing news his way. But Baker, which is, this is something that Murdoch is not shining from. There was a quote that I came across, um, but I'm not sure which publication um, it's from but the quote I'm just paraphrasing right now he said that in EU he can't do what he wants but in the UK he pretty much like in control sort of okay but Baker's readers will undoubtedly have seen his argument differently if he had come clean with them for example about the position of the editor of the time Tony Gallagher two months ago it emerged that Gallagher is named in litigation against the mail papers where he used to work as a serial user of private investigation companies previously shown in court to have specialized in unlawful practices such as accessing police records, acquiring unlisted phone numbers and stealing through trickery, personal medical and financial information. As I'm reading this, I'm thinking all those people who are involved to allow him to get away with this. You have police, you have the people uh, and um, how do you call this and who work at the hospitals and all of this. In order for democracy to work, everybody have to be involved. There are laws, rules and regulation that's there for people to follow. If each one of us are not following in a way instead of trying to make a little box here and there behind you know on top of your uh, salary this is where democracy dies so all of these people who works in the hospital the police officers who allow those journalists if you call them journalists to have access to this stuff when they should not it's their fault as well so all of us needs to be involved and don't try to make little bucks extra on top of other people's information. But let's continue. Gallagher is embraced in the male's blanket denial of these claims, but they are serious claims bought by the likes of Elton John, Baroness Doreen Lawrence, Sir Simon Hughes, and Prince Harry. And as things stand, they are heading to court. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, January tw um, 2025. If... Um, what is it? If come November, the U.S. vote the right way, there might be a change in this. What I mean by that is that if the Senate, the House, and the White House is won by Democrat, there might be some form of a way, I think there's a possibility, either Megan or Harry 
Mike come to testify in, um, uh, in Washington to give their experience. And then there might be new laws that might be in place into, you know, the journalistic aspect of things. This is our chance. If we F up come November, this is going to completely take off. The way the UK is, the US will be just like that if we mess up. There's so many branches, so many branches when we look at different topics, different issues. You got Middle East, you got the US issues. It's crazy. Come November, we really need to focus and vote for the right people because we already seen how many people who's willing to throw the democracy out of the window. Okay? Um, bear in mind too that if Gallagher did not personally commission this article, and he might have, he almost certainly approved it before publication and without any doubt carries the ultimate responsibility for it. This is Murdoch ethic for you. More generally, Baker fails to mention at all that it was Rupert Murdoch who pres who presided over the very scandal that is causing Lewis such inconvenience. That is true. And then these people are adults. I cannot understand this. These are adults. They should know from right and wrong. I understand you want to make money. You're working under someone else. But when you know something is wrong, you have to stand up. Look at how many of the journalists in the U.S. is standing up against him because they see something is wrong. Money is not everything. Okay, so let's continue. That was a veritable epidemic of unlawful conduct, lies, and cover-ups resulting in what Murdoch called, quote, the humblest day of my life. Oh, that's what they call? Mm. And to date, costing him costing his company more than one billion pound in legal settlement. No, I don't know how these people feel like th uh, the way they're going about is uh, a way of making money when he's losing, you know, settle over this amount, one billion pound in legal settlement. No wonder Baker, writing for a Murdoch newspaper, didn't want to go there. Yet, it would have been interesting to see him make a case that it was all trivial. Now, when Baker bangs on about how brilliant British journalists are, does he bother to tackle some of the complexities in that picture? Complexities with names such as Piers Morgan, Kelvin McKenzie, Andy Coulson, Colin Myler, or was it Major Mahmoud? I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. Clive Goodman and Gary Jones. There's some link to some of these people he mentioned. He also marks the post slogan, democracy dies in darkness. He writes, roughly translate it states, with total ingenuousness, we are the light of freedom. If you try that in the British newspaper, you invite a lifetime of ridicule. <laughs> bold talk and he is probably right except that of course the british corporate press is such a fountain of hypocrisy that the moment it had finished laughing it will be writing in the loftiest term about how some law it doesn't like is the gravest threat to press freedom in 300 years and how a free press is vital in a healthy democracy not so much ingenious as downright cynical which do you prefer baker himself acknowledged in throw weight style that quote journalism is of course important exposing wrongs and holding powerful people to account is essential. Again, however, someone more self-aware might have wondered how true that was of the times, which for 10 years, far from holding power to account, has been a cheerleader for the most corrupt and incompetent government this country has seen in more than a century. Journalism is serious. It has a vital mission, which is to inform the public so they can play their role and citizen. Thank you. That's what I was just saying. Every one of us have a part in taking it. There's rules and regulation that is placed for us to follow. And if we don't follow it, how is that going to work? Where certain people, when you look at Trump, how he's getting away with so many things. How is that going to work? Okay, so let's continue. It's almost done. Actually, it's almost done. The job of informing means so far as physically possible, telling the truth telling the truth is only taken lightly by people who want to sell you lies but hey baker might say that's just ethics and how can that put money in the pockets of billionaires 
<laughs> very true okay the link of this article will be in the description for you to read by yourself without me interrupting okay that was by Brian, Brian Cape Cod let's see some of the comments so I read my comments and that's the only comment there so let's go to the next tweet and I believe this is the one that I posted on my community board and I was thinking did I put it on the list because it needs to be in this video okay so this is a small discussion that was going on the whole point for sharing it is that um, some people are seeing what is happening because many people were in the dark and um, the damage have already been done they really don't care anymore if they leave right now the damage have been done because the place let's say for instance like New York Times or WAPO Washington Post is one place for all of them to be there when I mean them I mean journalists in the US to be in one place where people know that this is where they could get the information once they get those people out they buy them out scatter them everywhere they're not in one place anymore so that the damage has already been done so this is why I'm sharing this because people are seeing the light when when you look back on 2020 on pure YTE. I have some videos uh, with the thumbnails of the storm is coming where I have the UK flag in it. So they were doing their things already. They don't want, they're bothering themselves. They're really bothering themselves because they, they want to start something between the US and the UK. I've, I saw it back in 2020 couple of things that i was seeing i was pointing them out i even bring the movie um what's that movie uh it's a cartoon kind of animated uh, video uh angry bird where they were stealing their eggs and while they partying with them and all of that same thing is happening here and then that uh something is falling just look at the screen i can't think of the name uh, the title of that movie where uh, they have a version of it for the u.s and they have a version of it and in, in the uk and uh, when the queen passed i really thought something was gonna happen because it was like life was playing you know imitated uh, the movie or something like that so these people they've been at it they've given us hint of how they're proceeding with it and the worst part here we have people within the u.s who's uh, helping them you know you have that uh what's that uh, organization who's trying to get heavy um information regarding immigration and things like that okay all these other uk's doing that they're bothering themselves when i mean they it's not all american the politician the people who's probably in power who's comfortable right now i don't know why i really don't know why they're doing this if I, I don't know I don't know if they're doing it for someone else they got themselves out of the EU they knew things was gonna happen so I really don't know so but anyway let's get back to the original recording I'm just sharing this tweet because I feel like more American are seeing some of the things that I was pointing out a long time ago okay so that's that British reporters have ruined at Newsweek and the Daily Beast, what were once beloved American news organizations are now mostly tabloid rags overseen by British media people. Okay, this is the thing that uh, Bo um, Boris Johnson's sister, I don't know her name, I keep on referring to her as Boris Johnson's sister, which she is, um, about uh, things the uh, journalist needs to be like uh, entertaining. I find it hard to see who is the winner here. I mean, Prince Harry goading the press is only and, and forcing the press into humiliating payouts is not going to be particularly good for, for the Sussexes. And it's certainly not great for the press, which is on the hook. I think, I think the total payouts for phone hacking and other illegal uh, inf information gathering is up to a billion. And there are many, many more cases to try. So my my point about all this is I think we only have losers here and it's in all our interests that we have a strong, vigorous and honest press. And if it was strong, vigorous and honest, I agree that 
the press would have reported more on the judgment, the Prince Harry judgment that came through on Friday than it did. It was basically a broadcast story, far more than it was a print story. And of course, the print and broadcast are in competition, so you can sort of understand that. Um, so my question is, who who wins out of this? Has the has Prince Harry done the press lasting damage? Do you think that as a result of the the judgment against that went against Mirror Group newspapers, we're going to see some sort of state regulation of the press? I genuinely hope not. I don't want the press to be in the last chance saloon at all. I want. I want to see newspapers thrive. This is my industry, and I think it's in all our interests that we have a thrive. And we've got the most wonderful uh, newspapers in the world in this country. You you read the newspapers in in the States or in France. They're very dull. They're not entertaining at all. I think that we can have both a serious and an entertaining press. And that's what I want to see survive. I don't want to see Prince Harry destroy the industry I love. Okay, so this is what they're turning every major papers into. And also, let's not forget, the kind of espionage that was going on with Maxwell and Epstein, okay? These people, they were getting every business people into some sort of a compromise situation. So, with that being said, some of the thing they probably this is fully fully my humble opinion the owners like bezos sometimes i'm starting to wondering what do they have on him for him to still stick by this guy he's not firing him okay and those newspapers uh, the daily beast that this guy just mentioned what do these people have on them that they are letting the uk people ruin it okay so this is a form of an attack that is going on. So I truly wonder what do they have against those business people. If you look on the screen, I have a screenshot where they said um, in Maxwell, a uh, bl little black book has uh, over, I don't remember the number, plus of business people, politician, uh, entertainers, and all of that. So I'm assuming many of these owners who are business people, ha they have something on them if you put one and one together. Because the model of what the UK has for journalism, so many people have died, commit suicide, and there's so many examples in front of us. Why do they want to stick with these people who's literally it's not in the dark anymore they're literally telling us that they want to revamp you know the way the those papers are okay and then many of these people those business people are where they are because of our democracy the freedom that we have to allow them to run a business they start small they didn't start that big they start small and they work their way up like bezos for instance okay and then for them as they become very successful now they're pulling the red carpet off of the, uh, after them okay so this is what is happening here many of these billionaires they make it through our democracy now they're bringing these unethical ridiculous people to reshape our journalism and then now they're rolling the red carpet after them they made it big forget the rest how many many brilliant young people that are out there that still need our democracy for them to improve our system but these people are ruining it for everybody else okay so these are some of the comments here i'm not gonna read all there's some on my community board or oh, maybe I'll, I'll read all okay the washington post newsroom is fighting back against the brits i hope they win okay so i blacked these people what did this person say who is that okay at the washington post i noticed newsweek articles becoming a little questionable a while ago but i never thought of wapo will go that route very proud to have recently canceled my subscription okay so i read the response to that okay and sadly the toxic brits 
or continuing to infect American publication. I mean, they ease themselves here. They was it uh, was this guy um, Murdoch. He started, I believe it was. I'll look it up. Um, 1973, uh, over the 1970s, ease himself in into our system. Uh, you know, I think it was somewhere in uh, where is that? San Antonio or something like that. And then later on, you know, I think in the 80s, he started building up his empire. And then the Fox News start and uh, screw people's mind. Because through tweets, I've read that Fox News channel was being played on base, you know, where militaries, American militaries. I'm like, they're really ruining people's mind. Literally ruined people's mind to change the way the... Uh, the soldiers think about their own government. You see, the January, January 6th, what happened? So he start with Fox News, and then he see it work, and then little at a time, they're sending their people over here, sending their people over here to do their damage. Many newspapers have already been damaged. Okay? Yep, I noticed it too. Google News is in shambles. Nothing but palace propaganda, opinion pieces, and articles from unnamed sources. There's the rolling eye. And there it is. Okay, Daily Beast is closing shop. It only proves that the American readers are interesting and murder toxic leftovers have to offer. Their inflated egos think they can revive leadership at Washington Post by throwing insane gossip or made-up scenarios based on what Megan's thoughts are. <laughs> what was it? that uh, There was an article that I read where someone died and then th that's regarding washington post uh thing someone died and then instead of focusing how the person died in term you know and on the scene police report or whatever to figure out things but instead they want to focus on if mcdonald's was the cause of his death i'm like what the f all right very sad toxic british journalists being imported into u.s a media other garbage Waiting to see if Washington Post follows the same path. The Brits have zero journalistic integrity. They are fit for facts on or news max only. Shame really. Okay, that's a ad I don't wanna promote it. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so I read mine. So pretty much the plan here. Oh, did I read mine or I skipped it? Let me oh. Alright, well, that was the plan. They eased themselves in the system, Fox, I mean Fox News. Now they were or still getting ready for Trump. They want Americans in the dark so they can ruin the country. This is a different type of war. They hijack every mainstream media and YouTube to spread lies. Fox News was so successful, MAGAs. Now they want uh, across the nation, pretty much ruin the entire nation. And let's do what we do best. Okay, so that's that. Um, okay, so let's go to my last one. That's a Twitter. Oh, this one I just saw. Okay, so there's this here. <laughs> I think I just uh, responded to it 31 minutes ago. What the F is Meta and X? They will forever be known as Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, because when you look for Facebook, what they did was for the 20, uh, 2016 election where, uh, you have a whole bunch of outsiders, um, let's say, uh, Russians and people, they give a whole bunch of money to advertise, um, not only advertise, uh, advertise in terms of propaganda to change the mind. And it worked. Look what happened in 2016. We got Trump. Um, but, um, to change the mind and we had uh, they had a lot of investors some of them bought a good amount of shares of facebook but not enough to be let's say the head of uh to like have a final uh, final say but they bought a good amount of share but not too much to like uh become like let's say what's the owner of uh of Facebook what's his name Zuckerberg okay just enough but not enough to surpass him in other words in my opinion they wanted to have a say on how Facebook run its ad so 
that's why they buy that as much as many shares uh, as they did I don't remember the numbers but they didn't want to be so visible where they will be the head of it okay but they want to be up there of part of decision making but as a whole on paper they will not be seen as the Russian who's running Facebook do, do I make sense does that make sense that's what I was seeing going on. Anyway, the way I explain things, the way that I see things, don't always like the way the professionals sort of explain. But that's what I was seeing. Okay? But that's that. All right. So let's see here. Oh, this is very small. Since the event of this suit, Twitter has merged into X Corp and is now known as X. Facebook is now known as Meta Platforms. For the sake of clarity, we will refer to this platform as Twitter and Facebook as they were known during the vast majority of the events underlying this suit. Oh, I wonder where she got that. She's laughing because, you know, they try to change their name, but people still refer to them as what they were originally was. Facebook will always be Facebook instead of Meta, and uh, uh, Twitter will always be Twitter instead of X. Okay, so there's me here. I know, right? They plunged the company to a sphere I can't even imagine to make people forget their craziness. They want to change their names. It's almost like back in the 90s when celebs did something stupid and got caught to erase what, oh, that should be what they did. They went uh, to rehab. To them, everything will huh, poof and she was gone. We remember. Okay, I agree. Like if they want to change the name, make new platform that's why that's it that's all they have to do this is 100 percent why if they want to change their name all they have to do is change their platform create something brand new completely all right and there was a, a time where you know they're trying to make people especially the squad to leave uh twitter but instead many of us stayed but we sign up different platform let's say like boozies and stuff and we start telling each other what what platform we are on and what our id was uh, or is so that we will still connect on the next platform okay so that's that um let's do a prayer for the sake of uh journalism yeah let's do a prayer for the sake of journalism prayer for i guess the light because journalism is more to shed light on things and these people want to turn it off so let's say light okay prayer for light okay there are many prayers for light including prayers about walking in the light prayers for illumination prayers for guidance okay uh, prayer of light God, your light is the commencement and culmination of creation. From now until forever, you are the light of life. You invite us to walk in your light and become lights to the world as we do so. Revive our hearts to sing. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Okay, is there another? Okay, so that's that. This is for a prayer. I don't normally do prayers for this channel because I usually say baggage for God. Still, this is a baggage for God to take care of. But uh, we need to shed light on the BS that is happening. Okay? So, that is it. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. If you want to support this channel, there's a PayPal link and a Cash App link in the description. You could donate. Those who have donated, thank you. And don't forget to check my shop. I have two shops. One is Zazzle. I started putting new... Right now, as I'm talking, I only have three things two jigsaw puzzles and one pillow the end that has some little other accessories and the other one is a uh, spread shop where i have designs of different t-shirt cups and whatnot if i knew about zazzo before spread shop i will have put everything on zazzo but um i've already have a lot of things designed there and uh so i just kept it it doesn't bother me so that's that. That's other ways you could help support my channel. Okay? And those who have shopped through there already, I appreciate it. Okay? So that's it. Thank you for watching. Now I'm going to do another video.
Livanaka. It is a great privilege to be with all of you today. You know, we want we ask for forgiveness and uh, and please come back. for the better. 